appreciate it. You're, you're very welcome. So hello, Photoshop folks, we'll call you. Uh, this is the second in the series. So this is uh, Photoshop class or session number two. And we're going to try to do nine of them. So one every month until the end of the year. And uh, this second session, we're going to deal with five or six tools is all we're going to talk about. And this is taking you through, like I said, it's Photoshop basic. So we're going to show you some basic things that you can do with these tools. And we're also going to look at the tools, uh, where they're located, everything. So if you check back with the recording and go at your own pace, you should be able to use these techniques in the future. So I'm going to share my screen. Oh, no. And can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Yes. OK. And please feel free to ask questions at any time. Uh, I've been using Photoshop for a long time, so sometimes it's difficult for me to slow down. One of the things that would help a great deal is enlarging your cursor. Yeah, I have to. There's, you know, I, I did that at one time. And the problem with that, Alan, is that uh, it interferes with other programs that I use. Uh, so well, you can switch back after the class. Yeah, I have to switch it back and forth. And uh, maybe if I can figure out a quick way to do that, then I will in the future. All right, so let's review a couple of things. All the way to the left, Photoshop should default when you open your version of Photoshop to the tools. This is the toolbar all the way to the left here. Up top, above here, this is where all of your options are. And options of when you click on a tool, it will present you options of what you want to do with that. And then the last panels that I want to show you are, I'm going to call them the Windows panels, which are over to the right. And the reason I'm going to call them Windows panels is, and I don't know if I can be, hang on one second. There we go. Uh, if you, I couldn't see him because part of the Zoom was blocking my uh, view here. But see this window choice here? If I click on that, it gives me a, many choices. <laughs> and any of those that I have checked, it gives me as panels on the right hand side. So you can see tools is checked. So that goes okay. over to the left automatically. Options is checked. That goes on top automatically. Wow. And then the all of the character layers are up on the right hand side. OK. And a few things that don't show is checked like history, it is under there with the layers panel. So there's history, which we may use tonight. So just to point it out. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we we covered in the first session, we covered these first five tools. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six tools we, we covered. So we're going to start off with the brush tool and the pencil tool. And if you see that tiny little arrow next to that pencil, it tells you any other tool that's hidden behind it. So there's a brush tool and a pencil tool. The pencil tool you would rarely use for much of anything. And the reason being is that it's good for drawing straight lines. It's good for filling in pixels if you have a broken pixel or you look in, and you enlarge something tremendously and it looks like it's missing a pixel, then you could put in one pixel at a time, which not very many people are gonna do that. So I'm gonna enlarge my image here. And we're gonna take a look at this flower. And I have the brush here and the brush will default 
to whatever color is shown in these boxes down here on the lower left. So the brush will always be that color unless you click on this and you change it to something else. So I'm going to change it to a dark purple. And I have a reason for that. Uh, there's my new color, that dark purple. Can you see this color picker box? OK. Uh, the last session, somebody said that there were some pull-out menus that they couldn't see. And you guys could see the window uh, menu when I, OK. Yes. So I'm going to say OK. And now if you look down here in the lower left, there's that dark purple. So I'm on the brush tool. And now we want to look at some of the options. So on normal, there's all kinds of things. You could dissolve, you could do soft light, hard light. Don't worry about any of those things right now. That's way too many choices. But let's look at opacity. And that tells you how much opacity we're going to have of this dark purple. If I add a, if I have it at 100, it's going to make a big dark purple blob. And I'm going to hit Control or Command Z and make that go away, because that's not what I want. But I just wanted to show it to you. The other thing I forgot to show you is the size is determined over here. It's 124, which is what the size of this circle is. I don't want that. I'm going to go with like 26 sounds like a good number. Hardness is important because if you have hardness at 100%, it's going to make a very hard edge, which I don't want. I want a very soft edge. So I'm going to go all the way down to softness. So back to my opacity, I wanted, I, don't want much opacity at all because the less opacity, the more you can stroke over something to make it darker and darker and darker. So I'm going to do a couple things. And I'm going to start off with 5% and see what that does. And I'm going to darken the veins in this flower. So I am brushing 5%. You can't see too much. I'll do it again. Oops. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do Control Z twice here. And I'm going to duplicate this copy, this layer that I'm on. And I'm going to work on this new layer so that I can show you before and after. So I'm working on this background layer on the right hand side. And 5% was a little low, so let's try 11%. And I'm going to paint this dark purple on here and you, hopefully you can see some change happening on your screen can you see that or is it too okay yes all right i'm going to do a couple more and these are just techniques that work with flowers it works with anything if you wanted to darken or enhance a color you could even put a different color on there so Let's look at one more color. I'm going to just do all the veins here. And I'll do some of this outside edge of the flower as well. And I'm just drawing with my mouse, making little purple clouds, as uh, Bob Ross would say. Yeah, some people know who Bob Ross is. And. Uh, so I've, I've changed it a little bit with that, but let's do something a little more dramatic. I'm going to go back here to my color picker, and I'm going to change that color. And this is just a slider, goes down, and I'm going to get a really strong green. And the reason I'm going to get a strong green is inside of the center of the flower is some green but it wasn't very strong. So I added some to it. 
Now, because I'm only at 11% opacity, you can still see through that opacity. It's 11% transparency, if you want to call it that. So you can still see through to the original portion of that flower that I colored. It doesn't blot it out. It simply puts a tiny layer of color on top. All right, let's see. So let's go back and I'm gonna get my purple again. And I didn't say what particular purple it was. Not really critical in this, but, and I'm going to uh, make those edges around the outside. I'm gonna make a bigger, take a bigger brush. I'm gonna keep them very soft. And I'll enhance the opacity a little bit. And I'm gonna do the outside edge of this flower. This is also good for making shadows if you wanted to. If you wanted to make a shadow underneath something, you would choose black or dark gray to make a shadow. And you could put a shadow on something too. All right. So let's see if I can switch back, turn this off, this layer off. Okay, there's the original flower and there's with some enhancements in it. And these are all techniques to use. And you can see how that flower stands out from the other ones now where it wasn't necessarily before. And there's a before and after, but it's more recognized. But the brush tool is basically a way to add color to things. And you can do it, I always do it in a transparent form or a translucent form, shall we say, uh, so that it just adds color gradually. So let's move from this, if there's no questions about the brush tool, and let's go to the clone tool. This is was my favorite tool when I, used Photoshop for the first 10 years of my career of using Photoshop. The clone tool was my favorite tool. Uh, I still like it a lot. So let's look at this flower again, but you can see there's a dead section of leaf behind here, which is not very pretty. So I'm gonna select that, just this little section, and I'm gonna have to do that individually. So I'm going to go here to my polygon lasso tool. The options are going to set it to one pixel. And you pretty much always want to do it one pixel. A hard edge is zero and one gives you just a tiny bit of a soft edge. So I'm going to enlarge this a little bit. I've got my polygon lasso tool and I'm going to click and drag and click and drag until I get enough. This green part isn't important because that's what I'm going to use to clone with. And I'm making a selection so I can make a very specific area of clone. I'm going to show you a clone tool when you're not, when you don't care to be as specific, but so this is the clone tool over here on the left. It looks like a rubber stamp, if you've uh, seen those in the past. And I'm gonna stick with a soft brush here because this leaf is a little bit soft. And my size is 32, that's fine. And I'm going with opacity of 100%. And the reason being is I wanna replicate the surface of this leaf and all of its texture. So you wanna use a 100% opacity when you do that. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key or uh, whatever it's called, uh, option on a Mac and click. And now, can you see inside of that circle, there's some greenish and I'm gonna use that and I'm going to paint 
inside of my selection area. Now I made a mistake because now I've got the shadow area, which I don't want. So I went back, I'll go back and I'll do Alt or Option and click, pick a different area. And I'm going to fix that dead section of the leaf. Now I took off my selection and I'm going to go back to the clone brush. I'm going to make it a little smaller so I can get a little more detail. And I'm going to go right up against that edge and fix anything that I think is not perfect. And you can even see some flaws in this leaf over here. I'll just quickly fix a couple of those little flaws. So for instance, if you had a leaf and, a, and some bug had eaten a hole in it, you could fix the hole very easily. So that's cloning when you want to be specific and you want to make a selection. And the reason I made that selection is because when you use the clone tool, I guess I should have showed you that more specifically, so I will. I can go back in my history and I can go back in my history. Can you see that pull down? Okay. I'm going to go back to the polygon lasso tool and it shows me that. What I didn't show you was that you have this clone tool and I'm going to make it bigger. And I'm going to do Alt or Option and click. And now I've got green in this circle, but I can go over here to the flower. It's not going to do anything. It won't, it won't clone anything. It won't colorize this flower. It's only going to go inside of the selection area. So Alt and click or Option and click, and then you can paint that area. Oops. Uh, I hit the wrong key, sorry. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna fix that area right here. And I'm gonna click off of it. And I'm gonna use the clone tool again and fix the little pieces that need to look a little prettier. Okay, so that's when you want to get into more detail. Now I'm going to do something more general. And I'm going to look for a flower that has some room around it. And this is not a great photograph, right? I'm not showing you something that I would submit in a competition or anything. I'm doing, doing this because it allows me to use my clone tool, and I'm going to use a very large brush now, bigger than that. Let's say 385. Okay, here's 385. And what I'm going to do with that large brush is I am going to normal, I'm going to do opacity of 100, and I'm going to sharpen up that brush a little bit. I have a really soft brush. So I'm going to make it a little bit harder. You almost never want to do 100%. You, at most, maybe 50%, but I'm going to use 17. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a section of this, and I'm going to do Alt or Option and click. And now, it's, now the circle is loaded with the edge of that flower. Now notice something, when I come over here, I'm gonna put this flower over here. But as I start, what I want you to look at is, I want you to look back here as I start making this flower over here. So I'm gonna click and hold. And do you see the plus sign over on that other flower to the right? That shows me where my cursor is taking the color from. And, and the circle on the left is telling me where I'm putting it. So now I'm going to follow this, and I'm watching the plus sign 
over on the right hand side. And I'm going around the edge of that flower. That's I'm looking at the right and it's producing a flower on the left. And then I can go back in here, the center. And now I've just cloned that flower. So I've also made a little bit of extra over here from one of these other flowers that I can fix later if I need to. I can also take, come back here. I'll come back here. This time I'll go up here, Alt or Option and click. And then I'm going to put another flower down here. So you can imagine that you could use this for adding rocks at the beach. You could um, replicate a person if you're doing a creative uh, image. You could, there's, there's a thousand uses of how you could use the clone tool. I often use it to repair backgrounds or fix things that are uh, not working. And, uh, but this is just really to demonstrate how it gets used. And like I said, keep in mind different things that when you look at an image, will the clone tool help you by taking things out or adding things? So in this case, we added. Now let's take something out. I'm gonna take these green uh, leaves down here and I'm gonna come down to the bottom of those green leaves and I'm gonna click and then I'm going to come over here because I'm going to get rid of these flowers up here that aren't doing anything for me. And you can see the original place I clicked now is where the plus sign is. And then we can add some greenery here. I can come back and I can do it again. And I've added some more greenery. So it does a pretty good job of dropping in all these additional leaves. And as long as you're careful, it doesn't look bony. It looks like it was always there. Just looks like there's another shoot of a plant coming up there. And that comes in really handy in a lot of places. Okay, let me show you something else that makes a little more sense now that we've done a few of the basics. I'm going to switch images. And this is an image that I did enter into competition under monochrome. And I changed it to monochrome, but the real key is that I cloned all of these flowers. This is what it, the original picture looked like. Uh, but when I when I submitted it in competition, I filled this whole background with all of these flowers. So I'm going to do that right now. And I'm going to take my clone stamp and I'm going to go a little bit smaller. And my hardness, I'm going to bring it up a little bit, maybe 25. I rarely go above that. And my opacity, I'm going to keep the opacity at 100% for now, and we'll see if that works. So alter option, click, and now it's loaded me with these alyssum flowers, and I'm going to wrap those around this little girl. And I may have to take another area. And sometimes you're going to have to, let me enlarge this quite a bit, to show you <clears throat> some of the reasons that you have to be careful. I've got a hard edge here in the center. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to take a softer, little bit softer brush. I'm going to clone another section, and I'll put it in there. And... If you're being careful with this, you won't be able to tell that things have been cloned, especially in a uh, in a projected image. 
prints are a little less forgiving, so you have to be even more careful. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to take these flowers by her head, and I'm going to draw in some more. And I'm just going to keep drawing them for the short term here until I get enough that looks like it's getting full. So if I was doing this for an image I was going to put in competition, I would be taking a lot more time and I would be a lot more specific with the flowers that I'm choosing. But I'm just trying to give you the idea. And I did not uh, do a before and after. I'm sorry, I should have duplicated the image. Okay, so I'm gonna take this. I'll paint in these guys. And they, you know, it's funny, all in Photoshop, they always call it painting in things. And, uh, but really, you're using a clone tool, so you're cloning things in. And that's how I usually talk about it. I'm going to take a little broader area here. Do a few more and then we'll back up and take a look. So the original image had just a huge bed of flowers that she was laying in. My this little girl is my next door neighbor, and they're a family from Ukraine. They're really nice people. Okay, so that's enough, but that gives you the idea. So now you can see, actually, I can go back and show you the original. What am I, if I am, okay, so that's where we, <clears throat> that's where we are. Whoops. <laughs> okay, that's where we started. And that's where we are. So you can see huge difference it made in the background. And once again, you have to be more careful than I was because I've got some blurry images. I have to take individual flowers sometimes and replace. And it would take, I probably spent a couple of hours just making the flowers behind this uh, little girl's head. But it was all worth it since... Uh, I don't know whether I got a, I, I, I won an award that night. I don't remember which one, but okay. Um, so that's the clone tool. The eraser tool is right underneath it. And your tools may not always be in the same order, but I'll just remind you if, if you look at the bottom, I have three dots here the bottom of the stack of tools, just above the colors. And those three dots, if I click on that, and a sidebar comes out. Can you see the sidebar on this one? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it says edit toolbar at the top. And I haven't let go of the mouse. I clicked, I drag, drug over to there, and now I'm gonna let go. And this shows me all the tools I have in my toolbar and the order I have them in. I can change that order. I can click on this lasso tool and I can move it to the bottom there. And those are three tools that are under polygon lasso. So you look over here to polygon lasso and these three tools are the behind that little parrot or that little arrow. Uh, and all tools, uh, you can stack as many as you want. 
Over on the right-hand side, it says extra tools. These are all tools that I rarely use. So they're all over here. It's something like the slice tool. The slice tool is used when you're making web, web pages. And uh, I don't use this to make web pages. Uh, so now you know where the customize your toolbar is and you can make it in the order of whatever uh, works for you. This is how I use it for me. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go to the eraser. Now, <clears throat> the eraser is not a common tool or as common a tool to use because it makes a hole. It doesn't really erase because uh, it's gonna make a hole in whatever you're doing. So I'm gonna put my eraser tool here. I look up in my options. I've got an eraser brush. The opacity is 100%. Flow, you can just ignore that because it's very similar to opacity. And uh, I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. And then I am going to look here. And she now has a white eye. And the reason she has a white eye is because it is only going to take the background color in your lower left hand side, the purple and the white it's going to take and make the background color show up. So if you wanted to put in your own white flowers, I'm going to control Z it. Well, actually, here's, here's a way you could use it if you wanted to. I didn't, I wasn't going to demonstrate this, but we can still do that. I'm going to make a very small brush. So I now have a very small brush. And this girl doesn't really have a strong highlight in her eye, and most people do from a reflection. It was a overcast day. And I could put it on very soft and small size. And I can now give her a highlight in her eyes. Wow. With the eraser tool. So, but be careful of the eraser tool because basically all it's going to do is fill things with white unless um, unless you have a transparent background. So how would you get a transparent background? Well, you come over here to the layers and it has a lock on it right now, which means that it's going to use that background of that white as the base. I'm going to double click on that and I'm just going to let it call it layer zero. If you wanted to name your layers, by the way, this is how you do it. You double click on, I double click on that layer and I can call it, let's call it uh, flowers or flowers and girl. I'm not going to get into layers today, but that just tells you flowers and girls. So now it's no longer locked. And I can come over here to the erase tool. And hopefully I'm not lying to you. Yeah, so now it's making a hole. See all those checkerboard? Mm -hmm. That little checkerboard is because it's just simply making a hole. Now there's a reason you might want a hole. You might want to have something show through from another layer at some point. But once again, I will cover that when we're covering layers in, in a more advanced session. And don't forget Control Z. It makes everything better. It takes you back to where you were. Okay. Um, let's see here. All right, now I'm going to leave this and I'm going to show you something different. Uh, those are my flowers. Okay, this is our model Jordan that uh, we used when we did a session on uh, portraiture in my garage. And uh, 
Jordan is a guy that wants to be a model someday. And this is a raw shot of just as it came out of the camera. And uh, I'm going to unlock the background. And I'm not going to rename. Well, OK, I'll name it just so it's a good habit to have. So this is Jordan. And he's on this layer. Now, I am going to go back to one of the tools that I covered earlier, uh, not today, but in previous session. And I'm going to go over here to this quick selection tool. I'm going to click on it. And it allows me to select the subject. And it's going to try to do a good job of picking just Jordan out of there and not the white background. I click select subject, it thinks for a second, and now it selected him and nothing else. And why is it important? <laughs> it's Im very important because now I am going to uh, come up here and I'm going to select the inverse. And that now has selected all of the background and not him. And then I'm going to hit the delete key. And now that background is completely gone. Now there's one little error here. And here's a place for your eraser tool. See how down here it tried to get the shoelace, but there's also a little bit of shadow and there's a little bit here too. There's a few ways you could do this, but a fast way, if you don't need to be 100% accurate is to use the brush or the uh, eraser tool and do a pretty small version of it. That's maybe 17, a little bit of hardness, not too much, maybe 10, 12. Let's go with that. And remember I said he made a hole before when we were in that uh, field of flowers. And now I'm just brushing that edge. So if you want to be very, very careful with it, I'm gonna come over here to this other shoe. If you want to be very, very careful with it, then you could do a selection. And you'll hear people talking about masks all the time and using masks. The selection tools in the last two years have gotten so powerful that you really don't have to learn much about masks because it just made a mask when I did that. That is the same as a mask. I can fill that with color. I could make it lighter. I could make it darker. I could do all kinds of effects to it if I wanted to. But right now, I'm just going to hit delete, and it's going to get rid of the shadow area under there. Okay, so I'm doing all this in preparation for the gradient tool. And if you look over here to the left, this box, this is the gradient tool. I'm gonna click on the, well, before I click on the gradient tool, let's decide here. I'm gonna put, you have, a. Uh, upper color and a lower color or a left color and a right color, depending on how you want to look at it. And I'm going to take two colors and I'm going to blend them. So I clicked on the bottom color and I'm going to come over here to these little sliders and I'm going to slide up here in the blue zone. And I'm going to pick a color here. And it's going to be a little garish, actually, but it's for the effect. Now I'm going to do the plus sign down here in the lower right. And that gives me another layer. And on that layer, I'm going to put a gradient. So I come back over here to the gradient tool, I'll click that again. And now if I clicked at the top of this box, and I pull it down. I haven't done it yet, but if I pull it down to the bottom, it's going to give me a blend 
like you can see up here at the top, those two colors are now blended. And you have lots of options here about more blues or basics, et cetera, et cetera. Just ignore everything. <laughs> For now, that's, that's too much going on. Uh, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on the top of this box. And I'm going to drag it straight down. And it doesn't have to be perfectly aligned, but I could be off this way a little bit or that way a little bit. doesn't really matter. And I'm going to let it go. And it's going to show you that blend. Mm -hmm. Now that blend, so come back over to the layers panel. And I'm going to click on that layer. And I'm just going to drag it down below our model. And there he is. So gradient can create backgrounds for you. Uh, it can do many things, but backgrounds is a strong session of what it can do. Now, he looks a little weird there because there's no shadows. Before, there were shadows. But now there's no shadows because I got rid of all the shadows. So what I'm going to do is I am going to come back up here to my rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to put some feather on there. And the feather just makes a soft edge. Well, actually, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to put any feather. I'm going to leave it at zero. And I want some shadow underneath his shoes here. I don't want shadow everywhere. So I'm just going to pick his shoes or that area. And I'm going to right click inside of this box. And I'm going to say layer via copy. So now I've made, oops, control Z. I was on the wrong layer. So that made a copy of that section of the gradient, which I didn't want. I want just his shoes. So I have to back on him. And then I right click inside that box and say layer via copy. And now it's copied just the shoes here as the top layer. And you really can't see it very well at the moment. Black. So I'm going to make it a little bigger. And I put his shoes below him. And the reason I did that is I'm going to double click on here on layer two. And it's going to bring up a dialog box. Everybody can see this box? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to pick drop shadow. And you can see off to this side, it's starting to make a little bit of a shadow. Mm -hmm. I need to double click inside of where it says drop shadow. Yes, now I can control the angle of that shadow. I can make it come straight down. I can control the opacity of that shadow. The size is something that's important. If you only want a little bit of shadow, which I sort of don't want a huge amount of shadow, I can also control the distance, so how far to make some shadow. So I'm making this shadow. I'm going to make it come from actually a little bit from the left and down, which is a typical place where shadows uh, occur in many, many photographs. And just keep that in the back of your mind. I'm going to say OK. And now it's added some shadow below the shoes, but it also added some shadow on his pants here that I don't want. So I'm going to come back to the layer of where the shadow is. And I'm going to take my marquee tool. And I'm just going to go around that area. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to delete it here too. And now the shadow is only below his feet. And maybe I want it to be a little bigger. So I'm going to make the size of it a little larger. OK. And now that looks a little bit more realistic. I don't need shadow of his legs and his arms or anything else, just the shoes, because he's 
got to be on some kind of surface. And that makes it look a little better. I can also take both of those layers, just the shadow and him. I'll hit the move tool and I'll move him. I can move him around inside of here. He's on a separate layer. Okay, that's the gradient tool. You can also use the gradient just strictly in black and white if you wanted to make a background like that. So I'm going to delete. Uh, I know I can do it with this layer. I'm going to choose black. And you choose that by grabbing this little circle and move all the way to that lower left-hand corner. That's 100% black. And then this one, I'm going to make that. Uh, actually, I'm going to make that one black. Sorry. And I'll make the top one. No, I did it right the first time. Sorry. I'm going to make the background one white. Then you can come back to the gradient tool. And now it's loaded with dark and light. And I can do that same thing. And this time, I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. I'm just going to go to here. And let's see what that does. OK. Oh, sorry. It put it over top of, of Jordan, which I didn't want. I needed to be on this layer. That's. Layers takes getting used to, believe me. <laughs> I've been doing it for a long time and I still make some mistakes, but it's easy to fix. And so now he's on a background that would be more like in a photo studio. If you've ever been in a photo studio, uh, they have backgrounds like this and it would be perfect for uh, Macy's catalog and things like that. Eric, do you ever yes. use that for uh... Instead of a graduated neutral density filter, I've heard they use gradients like the sky above, and then it would be darker, and then you bring it down below, and it darkens the sky. It like works a in a similar way to that. And if you wanted to use this on a sky, then you'd have to make your opacity very low. Okay. That's your key there. Okay. And it will change and give you these lights and darks in the sky, uh, but you keep your opacity low so it doesn't make it black or, or white. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. So, so that's the gradient tool. And let's go back to one of my favorite tools these days. I'm going to go to Eric, before you start, could you have everybody mute their microphones? Because there's a lot of chatter behind you. Yeah. Everybody, Thanks. please do so. Uh, except for me. <laughs> okay. Um, so a tool that you will like a lot, a tool that is very easy to use, is this triangle. It's the sharpen tool. So there's lots of ways to sharpen things in Photoshop. There's very sophisticated ways to do it. There's uh, probably a dozen different ways to sharpen things. One I'll show you real quickly is filter, sharpen. You can do sharpen, which will sharpen the whole photograph. You can sharpen the edges of whatever it sees as having edges like the flowers, for example. Uh, you can do sharpen more, which is more sharpening, uh, smart sharpen, unsharp mask, which is the one that I use most often, by the way. And what that does is that shows you, let me get a flower in here for you to look at. Here's this flower and it blows it up quite a bit. And then the further you move this slider, to the right, the more it's going to sharpen it. And why isn't it doing that? Oh, there it goes. So you can sharpen it. So now if you look back at the left, everything is over sharpened, but it's sharper than it was. 
and you have to find a good point for that. Usually if you're over 200, you're over sharpening. And if your radius is over three or four, you're over sharpening. And I'll just give you some dramatic why nots. <laughs> and that's the radius factor. But that's if you want to use unsharp mask. So I'm going to cancel this. But what you're going to love is this tool, the sharpen tool. And once again, you go up to your options. And I'm going to pick something fairly large. And hardness in the sharpen tool, you probably don't want to go over 50. Uh, but let's use 27 since I have it. There's also a strength. And the strength is how much sharpening is, is going to appear with each stroke. And I'll show you that or each click, depending on how you do it. Uh, so let's go with about 25. And I'll enlarge one of these guys and I'll show you what a difference it can make. So here's my flower that I made a little darker. So I'm going to come back to this same flower and I've got the triangle clicked. And all I'm going to do is click and drag. And it's going to sharpen. And I'm going to go follow those veins. And it's not as dramatic in this as some things, but try it on your pictures. Uh, try it on every picture you have. Do not try it on a sky. Uh, don't try it on a blurry background. Only do it on things you want in focus. Perfect thing for it is people's eyes. You take a portrait of someone and their eyes are not jumping out at you. Click this little triangle and click on their eyes and see if you can improve their eyes. And nine times out of 10, you actually can. So I'm going to prove, I'm going to increase the strength here. I'm going to go up in the 50s. And I'm going to do a little bit more sharpening here of the veins. And I'm clicking and dragging because I don't want to sharpen everything. I want some more effect. And I'm doing inside of here. Now I'm going to over sharpen so I can show you what happens. This is what my last couple of clicks did. Kelly, I think we're getting a feedback on yours. There you go. Thank you. Uh, the last couple of clicks, it over sharpened. And you, you can see what it's done to this uh, center of the flower. So I'm going to do Control Z. And that softened it back up enough. Now, if I want to, I can do a small brush even smaller, and I can sharpen just a little bit in here. But doing as much as I did last time uh, was not working for the flower. So let's look at the before and after. I'm not sure I have the background zoomed up or not, but let's see. Yeah. So. That was the before, and now that's the after. So we've added a little green. We added some sharpness to it. And believe me, you will use the Sharpen tool. Uh, like I said, try it with every photograph you have. If you see that um, imagery in your lighthouses, if you, have, you want to enhance the bricks on the outside of a lighthouse, you could do that. Uh, so that's one way to... Think about this tool and play with it. OK, now I'm going to do the dodge and burn tool. And many of us have been grew up using dark rooms and that sort of thing. So we know what the words dodge and burn mean. And basically, it's darken or lighten. And because of that, you want to use this tool. And this is looks like a kind of a hand making the OK symbol. And I'm going to click on that. I hold it down, and I'll get the dodge tool. The dodge tool will lighten things. 
So let's go back to the same flower. And if you look at the options up here, first is the size. So let's look at relative size. Okay, I'm gonna choose that size. I want it to be very soft. Uh, when you're using the dodge tool to lighten things, you want it to be very soft. I don't know if I would ever use it beyond zero. <laughs> I, I would never use it up here, certainly. Uh, so definitely keeping it the hardness down. Next thing you need to choose after the size is what do you want to make lighter? Do you want to make shadows lighter? Do you want to make midtones lighter or highlights lighter? So in this case, I'm going to choose midtones. And I'm going to keep my exposure pretty low. I'm going to make it like 12%. And the intention is that I am going to take this flower and I'm going to try to enhance the lighter parts of this to almost make it like it's going to streak out a little bit. So I'm going to lighten this effect of the whiter sections of this flower. And I can just click and drag and click and drag. Now I'm starting to get a white effect in here. And the further you drag it out, you want to concentrate it on the close edge. You want to, when you're doing your initial clicking and dragging, and then you can go back in the close and then pull it this way. And if you, as you pull it down, it's not going to be as much of the light effect on the outer portion. It's going to be on the inner side because I'm doing 12% and I've already done like two or three 12%. It's going to give me an additional 12%, but on areas where I haven't drug it across, it's only going to be the original 12%. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to continue here. And you can see where this would make a dramatic effect on birds' feathers or a dark area in your, let's, let's switch to shadows here. And shadows just really means the darkest area of your image. And I can probably get some dodging out of here. But like I said, birds, feathers, shadows, uh, back to your lighthouse, or do you have a big shadow that uh, you want to take some of that shadow out, but you want to be able to control that shadow, then you can do that with the dodge tool. All right, I'm going to do a little bit more here. And then let's see if we can look at, I'm going to go back to my history. Look how many times I clicked that dodge tool a lot of times. And if I go back to here, uh, well, it didn't, it didn't keep up with me. I don't have enough layers. I don't have, an, excuse me, enough history to show you the original. But you can kind of get an idea. Uh, so you can enhance feathers, you can enhance shadows. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with it. And this flower is just giving you a demonstration. Okay, now let's go and look at, that was Dodge, and now I'm going to look at Burn. And I'm running out of time, so this will be the last tool we talk about. And I'm going to come up with uh, this size. And the idea is that I want to darken the edges of the leaf, sort of like I did initially when we were um, using the brush tool. And the exposure, I'm going to keep it low because I want to be able to come back and burn it again. Thing you have to be careful about with burning is that it can sometimes change 
the color. So you have to watch the color carefully so that it doesn't change too dramatically. So I'm gonna burn this. I don't have to be too careful because behind it, those are all dark shadows and it's not gonna burn anymore for those dark shadows. And if I only, if I had light areas back there and I only wanted to affect the edges, then I would select just this flower with one of these selection tools and not uh, that way I could just do only this and not the background. So I'm gonna make that a little darker. And 10% was a little light, so I'm gonna come back to 25. And you can see I'm doing highlights, by the way. It has those same three categories, highlights, midtones, and shadows. So I'm starting with highlights. I can darken things up pretty well with that because there's quite a few highlights in there. These work really well for people's faces too, for the shadows on people's faces, uh, to darken them or to lighten with, with the dodge tool. You can lighten under the eyes to remove dark circles. There's lots of things you can use. So I'm gonna to move to the midtones. And I wanna show you one thing. See this area right here? It's got, it started to change color, it's getting browner in that area, which I'm not gonna want, but let's see what the midtones gives me. And now I'm gonna go with shadows. And I'm gonna go out here on the edge. And that's gonna darken it up quite a bit because it sees that area as being dark already. Okay. So now I've created a lot more darkness around there. And the whole idea is to make the light uh, more important. Your eye is always gonna to go to the lightest part of the image. So it's gonna to go to where that uh, center of the flower is and where we've lightened it up. It's gonna give it a nice effect. And uh, I could also use that sharpen tool a little bit if I wanted to, to see if it would give me anything additional. Not really. Maybe a little bit. Okay. So let's look at the before and after. So this is the after. That's the before of what the flower looked like. And now that's what it looks like. So depending on your eye, you can do that with many things. You can do that with people. You can do that with um, all kinds of objects as well. Okay. Um, oh, let me show you one last thing, which is dodge and burn. So some of you are familiar with this image of mine. And uh, it's in the JCC show right now. And I created it a couple of years ago. But I'm going to show you what, that's the original photograph. So I photographed the ocean as the tide was going back out at a slow shutter speed. And it created these little swirls. And when I saw those squirrels, I decided that, hey, I could almost make that into a woman's hair. And there's some hair there. There's a kind of a spiral there. Uh, anyway, I started thinking about it. And then I just took my dodge and burn tools. And I started creating an outline of a person. 
So all of this is done with dodge and burn and a little bit of cloning. I cloned a little bit of water to get a little bit of effect here and there. But that's how I created this image. So from there, and I used as much of the ocean as I could, and then created that other effect. Okay, you can unmute yourself and let me know if you have any questions or uh, yeah. the other thing I wanna ask you is if there are specific things that you wanna see in future sessions, I'm gonna pick if no one does pick, so. Eric, with this image right here, did you turn it into a black and white before you did it, or did you do it? In... I did. Yes, it was a, it was obvious. Yeah, a digital color picture. I turned it to black and white, and I used. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but image adjustments. There's a black and white, and that's how I do mine. There's several different ways to do it but image adjustments, black and white, and then you have all these sliders and you can change with the way the reds in the original image are. So it's gonna change it to black and white at this point. If I had a color image here, it would now be black and white. But as I move these sliders, it would take any area that had a lot of red in it and it would change it. I don't think I can do it now because it's already been applied. Yeah. I can't do it now, but if it was a color image, that's how I do it. And I make all these adjustments here. Uh, more, more questions or any thoughts about what I should show next time? Well, I'm happy with whatever you want to show. One of the things I wanted to do or have you do is yeah. maybe identify on some of these tools, which ones are allowed in the reality-based categories and which ones aren't. I okay. know dodging and burning is allowed. Dodging and burning is allowed. You could not use the clone tool. You could not use, but I'll, I'll, I'll do that next time with an image and I'll, I'll take it and say a nature image. Let's take it for an example. That's a good point, Airdrie. We'll point that out to everyone and uh, don't oversaturate your images in general for anything. <laughs> um, anyway, this has Andrew, been great. Thank you. Andrew, you should send me a lighthouse shot. Oh, okay. What kind of? Send, send me one that, that, you're, that you're not going to do, or maybe you could do it yourself. You could follow some of the things I do, or you could do different things, but... Uh, Send me one because that that way I could use something that be an example for you and also how I would look at it and things I would enhance. And you'd have to keep it in pictorial, but not travel, but that would work. Okay. I have too many choices. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was easy for me to choose and ask you to send something in because I know exactly what you have. <laughs> but anyone, please, and if you'd like me to, to use yours as an example next time, uh, please send it. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll use it as an example and show you what I would do to that image. So, so what are the next set of tools? Uh, so the next set of tools are down here, pen and type and other things. And I'll probably skip these because these are not commonly used tools. I use them, but they're not common. And uh, what I would do next is I'm going to start moving to what all what are all these pull downs and what are, how could they help you or hurt you? And uh, I would you know spend some time uh, on these pull downs, and that'll be in session three. Can I email you a question after uh, for the next um, meetup? Certainly, Jeff. Kelly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I Thank think you that, so much. that covers everything for tonight. And uh, we'll do this again in a month. Well, Thank actually, you. it'll be dependent in a month only because my daughter's getting married on the 22nd of April. So whatever Wednesday is 
either before that or after that will probably be the date. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, That's exciting. Well, you know, she's been off the payroll for a while and <laughs> she's, uh, she's a very successful architect in San Jose and she's doing great. So no complaints. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. All righty. Take care, everyone. And thank send you. Me any, thank email you, me any sir. questions or send me some images for next time. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.